Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another creative cow tutorial and in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony. In the last lesson, we took a look at what to do if you purchase a stock element like a split screen element and you want to work with it or get up to speed working with it as quickly as you possibly can. And the technique that we used in that lesson was some very basic lumikeen. In this lesson, we're going to take a little bit of a step forward and we're going to talk about creating your own advanced split screening inside of Media Composer and Symphony. And what we're going to do is we're going to build our own. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to break this down into a few parts. What we're going to do is we're going to build our own advanced split screen. Then what we're going to do is we're going to get in and we're going to actually have it animate coming in. And what we're going to do then is we're going to then take that footage that we're going to put inside of these split screens and we're actually going to have that animate on as well. We're not just going to have the split screens moving in and out. We're actually going to have the footage moving with it. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Symphony and let's get started. Okay, so let's Alt Tab into Symphony, obviously Command Tab for all of my Mac friends out there. Now, most people immediately think that the work that we're going to do, we're actually not going to do inside a Media Composer or Symphony at all. We're actually going to use Photoshop or Adobe's After Effects to create this type of effect. Well, you know what? We could do it inside of those great applications, but then again, it kind of defeats the purpose of attempting to stay inside our NLE as much as possible. And all of this work can be done right from within the Media Composer and Symphony interface. Let me show you how we're going to do this. What we're actually going to do is we're going to navigate up here and we're going to open our graphics bin. We need to have our graphics bin open because we're going to come up to clip and we're going to create a new title. Now what we're going to do is select the standard title tool and let's create an advanced split screen. What we're going to do in this case is we're actually going to have four bars that are going to come in. Uh, one's going to come in from the left, from the right, from the left, and from the right. Now the reason that I like doing this inside of the title tool, we could obviously get you know white solids, drop them in our timeline, use the 3D warp tool to crop everything out, but there's a reason I like doing it inside of the title tool, and I'll show you why right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a rectangle here, kind of like such. What I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to copy and paste this because I want to sort of figure out exactly what size I want these bars to be here. And I think I'm pretty close. Now obviously I need to get some spacing a little bit better here. But just sort of see where we're going with this. Now, obviously, I can't have everything exact, but you'll get the idea. I think that's pretty close. And what we actually need to do is we just need to shrink these down just a little bit here. And then we're going to worry about, actually, I think that's probably a good size. And what I always do is instead of shrinking down each one, I just like to copy and paste one of them here. Because by doing this, we're going to make sure that they're universal sizes. Very cool. A little bit more space here just to kind of match what's above. Perfect. And we're going to go copy paste. And I think we've just done it. Perfect. I think that spacing is really good. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that this first bar is going to come out of the left side of the screen. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to have all of the bars sort of come to about the edge of title safe sort of on the right and on the left. So let's take this element. We're just going to drag it over like such that it sits on title safe right here. I don't mind if it sits a little bit outside picture safe. That's okay. We're going to do the exact same thing with this layer here. Do the exact same thing with this layer here. And you sort of see where we're going with this. Now, again, I said that this, uh, this effect could be done using the 3D warp tool on a white solid. But there's a reason I wanted to do it inside of the title tool. Now, what I'm going to do is hit Control and A because I just want to sort of center all this up a little bit here because I just noticed that it wasn't really centered very well. And that's okay because you know what? Now we actually have everything inside a safe picture. Now, like I was going to say, the reason that I like doing this inside of the title tool as opposed to the 3D warp is I get a little bit more flexibility inside the title tool than I do inside of the 3D warp. And let me show you what I mean. In most cases, if I'm going to do a split screen like this, what I actually like to do is come in and round the edges. It just gives it... For me, sort of, you know, this is how I would normally do stuff if I was doing this inside of a, a production switcher. And I just like the look of the rounded edge, or as I, you'll hear me commonly refer to that as a bullnose mask. A bullnose, because obviously it's kind of like a square, but with rounded edges. Now, this is looking very good. I'm actually quite happy with the way that this looks. So what we're going to do is we're simply going to save this title out. I'm just going to close the title tool and say save. And we'll call this, sure, why not, advanced split screen number one. I'm going to say save. We're going to save this to our bin. Okay, 
So our work has only just begun. What we've done is we've created the advanced split screen. And what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need four layers to actually animate this element coming in. OK. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in. I'm just going to add an endpoint probably about there. And maybe we'll just take about 20 seconds of it. Mark that as our out point. We're going to again hit B on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows just to overwrite into our timeline. I'm going to select my audio tracks, hit backspace on Windows, the large delete key on the Mac just to remove these audio tracks. And all we're going to do is just create three more layers. Like I said, we need four, one for each one of our bars that sticks out. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to drop this onto video two, drop this onto video three, drop this onto video four. OK. Now what we're going to do is come right back down to the bottom layer. What we're going to do is we're going to actually, instead of going into effects mode, which is what I was just about to do, instead we're going to use a great technique inside of Media Composer and Symphony 6.5, which is simply right clicking and saying edit title. What I'm going to do is, starting with the bottom most layer, I'm just going to say no, don't promote to marquee. We're going to have this bar be the bottom most layer. So I'm just going to remove these other layers from this title. We're going to save this out. Right click, edit title. This is on the second title. Now I know that the second title is going to be second bar up. There we go. Let's make sure we do that properly here. There we go. So actually, oh, that's why. Now, of course, I'm trying to delete something that's actually being seen through to the layer below. So that's OK. I know. And if I wanted to just verify, I could just turn the video off. And there we go. We're just dealing with the third bar there. So we'll just say save. Let's see if I can remember that this time here. Again, we only want the second bar from the top. So what we're going to do is choose the selection tool. Only want the second bar from the top. But of course, we're going to see these two bars down here. But what we want to do is just verify. Yep, only that third bar there. Perfect. So we're going to save this out. And we're going to do this again. Edit title. And of course, we only want the top bar this time. We're simply going to say no. Now, obviously, you could get in and create any type of shapes you want. You know, sort of position them wherever you want. I just wanted to start with something basic so you can see how we're going to do this. I'm just going to say save. OK. Now you'll see that if I solo these layers here, I'm just going to hold Control on Windows, uh, Command on the Mac. And what we're going to do is just click on the monitor here. And you're going to see that we're going to turn off all the other layers except the layer that the monitor is on. Very nice. So let's start. Well, why don't we just start with the bottom most layer? What I'm going to do is I'm going to step into effects mode. And I think we're going to have this animation take, I don't know, let's just say, I would take a second. Why not? What we're going to do is just punch in plus 24. Now, the reason I'm punching in plus 24 before I even put any keyframes in is because at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a keyframe. I'm just going to extend out the keyframe graphs here. And we're going to come up to our horizontal position. I'm going to right click and say add keyframe. What I'm going to do is come back. Now, the reason I wanted to do that is because I know that at this point, actually at this point where the keyframe is, this is where this bar is going to be out full. What we're going to do now is simply come in. I'm going to come right back to the beginning here. Again, we're going to add a position keyframe. And we're just going to slide this out of frame like such. Kind of like that. I think what we're actually going to do is extend it right over to about there. Now, of course, I had this take place in a span of a second. Now, you'll obviously want to you know, adjust this you know, to be the speed that you know, your client's going to want. Me, I'm just doing this for the purposes of showing you how this is going to work. OK, so now what we're going to do, again, we're going to hold Control. We're going to select that second layer. We're going to solo it, just so we only see that. Again, plus 24. We're going to mark that with a keyframe. Actually, let me undo that, because I don't want to add a keyframe to everything, just to the horizontal position. Again, come back to the beginning. Again. Right click, add keyframe. I'm just going to have this all the way outside the frame. And you see where we're going with this. Again, exactly the same thing. Let's monitor that layer here. Plus 24, keyframe. Let's undo that. We want to make sure we do this right. I'm so accustomed to doing keyframes over there. Bring it right back, add keyframe. You'll see by doing it this way, and actually what I'm going to do here is just undo that. I'll just add a keyframe this way. You'll see that once I do that, it adds a keyframe to every parameter which we just don't need. So I'm going to right click, add keyframe again, slide this off frame. And last but certainly not least, the topmost layer. Again, exactly the same thing. Plus 24, add a keyframe, come back. Let's actually do that again. You see it's just ingrained in my brain. Add keyframe. Let's come back here again, add keyframe. Let's just slide this out of frame. And what do we have now? What we have now when I turn solo off is we have all the elements coming in at the same time. The other thing is I want to stagger them a little bit. I want to have this top bar come in, then the second bar, third bar, fourth bar, one right after the other. Well, I know that that animation takes place over 24 frames. I'm going to hit plus 24. 
What we're going to then do is take layer 2. I'm going to hold Control on Windows Command on the Mac to snap to this edit point. Again, plus 24. Exact same thing here. There we go. Again, plus 24. Last layer. There we go. And now what we have is these elements moving in one at a time. Now, of course, last but certainly not least, I need to trim this down. And if we wanted to have this as a true element to work with, what I would do now is I would simply take this and I would actually do a video mix down of it. Now, there's a couple ways that we can do this. If this was an element I wanted to save out as a completely separate piece of media, I could either export it to the desktop and re-import it, I could do it as a video mix down, or in this case what I'm going to do is I'm just going to collapse everything down by hitting F9 on the keyboard. Now obviously a collapse is completely non-destructible, so if I need to get into any one of these elements I can simply double click on them and there they are. But like I said, in this case, we're just going to do it as a non-destructive move. There we go. Now of course what we need to do put some footage in behind here. I think in this case what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick some scenics. So let's come into our stock footage. I'll just hit Control and O here. Let's just come back up here. Back down to stock footage. There we go. Let's use, uh, sure, let's use time lapse here. I'm just going to pick four shots here at random. We obviously need four video layers much like we had originally. Let's take this, put it on the topmost layer. And let's just pick some footage randomly here. Now this is 20 seconds long, obviously way longer than what we're going to need. And that's okay. Let's just turn off my segment mode here. Just edit that in. Like I said, it doesn't really matter how long these clips are. We can shorten this or extend it however we need to. Uh, I don't think I'm going to go with a dark one here. Let's go with a lighter one. That's not too bad. And let's see, do we have another brighter one here? There we go. Perfect. Okay. What we're going to do here is we're just going to trim down our advanced split screen and there's our split screen coming in just like such. Now you'll see the only problem I have is that this doesn't come all the way in, no problem. Let's actually just undo what I just did and we'll just extend down this video here ever so slightly and of course we can't. I think it's because of that top layer. So let's try it again here. You know what? Well, let me just grab longer shots here. Now I said I didn't want night shots but I think that's okay. Now obviously you would just rejig this however you needed it to work here. So let's just extend this down just so our bars are all there. Perfect. There we go. These are some nice shots. Perfect. A little too dark. There we go. That's good. And the last one. You see swapping these out is actually very easy. Too dark. I think that's pretty good. Okay, now all these bars should come in. Now you'll notice the only thing is that because they are titles, they're over top of white. But guess what? Very easy to fix. Now what would happen here in this case, if I mix this down, we would obviously have black as a background. But again, that's a completely destructible process. We wouldn't then be able to go in and alter these elements if we wanted to. So how do we get around this? I'm going to just simply step into Video Layer 5 here. And we're going to create a new title. Now I know you probably know where I'm going with this. All I'm going to do is turn video off. We're going to save this out as appropriately enough. Black. We're going to say save. There it is. We're just going to put it on the bottom most layer here. And guess what we now have? We now have essentially a Luma key ready to go. And of course if we wanted to apply that Luma key, I'm going to hit Control and 8 on Windows, Command and 8 on the Mac. We're going to come all the way down to the key section here. Now what's going to happen is if you try to take Luma key and just drag it and drop it onto the pre-comp, it's not going to work. Now what's going on here? If I double click on it, you'll see that the pre-comp is now gone and all of my elements are just inside of this Luma key, not what I want. I'm just going to undo what I just did to get that pre-comp back and I'm going to take the Luma key, I'm going to hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and I'm going to drag it and drop it again and you'll see now what we have is we have the black keyed out and we, we're sort of right back to where we started again. Or are we? You'll remember in the previous lesson what I did was I stepped into effects mode, I came in and I said invert that key and take a look at what we have now. We now have our own advanced split screens. Very cool. Now of course, much like in the previous lesson, what we could do at this point, I'm not going to position everything, I'll just crop it quickly so you can see how we're going to do this is I'm just going to crop this up like such. You'll see now we have the layer below it. 
Again, exactly the same thing. What I'm going to do is just take 3D Warp, drag it to the layer below it. Now, obviously, it's cropped into the wrong place, no problem. Let's just bring our crop down, just so that it's in the section we need it to be. And you'll see we can obviously see through that tree below. Again, exactly the same thing. 3D Warp, just going to drag it and drop it. Now, let's just come down to this layer right here. And what we're going to do is, you'll see that we actually have keyframes in here that we don't want. So let's actually get rid of these keyframes as usual. There's a keyframe there, fine. And let's just make sure we see what's going on here. That's actually good, perfect, just like such. So we'll just delete that keyframe. Again, we're going to come down here. We'll just delete both these keyframes here. And with this layer, what I'm going to do, make sure I switch into crop mode. Just going to come down like such. Make sure we just have our tree. And of course, last but certainly not least, I'll delete that keyframe here, is we'll just do the exact same thing to the bottom most layer here. Of course, let's scroll down 3D Warp. Let's make sure we have the crop tool selected. Just come all the way down to the bottom. Come all the way down here like such. We don't actually have it revealed yet, which is fine. What we're going to do now is just come through. There we go. And take a look at that. Looks like creating advanced split screens inside a Media Composer and Symphony is actually very easy using the power of the basic title tool and the 3D warp effect. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.